Hello and welcome back to the screencast introducing R. When we, when we last worked, in fact our last couple of screencasts, we've created a whole number of objects and in this particular case, while I've already removed some of them, we can see that we have at least a few objects in our workspace. What I've done here is use the list command, ls, and just by keeping the parentheses open, it, it observes basically all of the objects that we've created. And that's a, b, x, and z, and a, a b, x. Uh, as a vector, and z is another scalar. Um, and that's very useful because, of course, this is our active workspace. This is where we've created things. This is where we're sort of storing in memory objects that we're using, whether they're data, whether they're strings, whatever. Um, and it's useful to know what they are. Now, we may want to remove certain ones. So, for instance, maybe we don't need the, the um, variable x anymore. And we can simply use the remove rm function to do that. And now if we call list, we'll see that x has disappeared. If you ask x, the object won't be found. You can use rm to also do um, multiple objects at once. We can remove a and b simultaneously. And as we'll see again, we're only left right now with a single um, object z in our, in our workspace. You can also, if you need to, if you want to remove all of the objects in your current workspace, uh, use this where, uh, function as you see here in the actual script rm list equals ls. The list equals, so list is a type of uh, class of objects, and we're going to learn a little bit more about them later. Um, we're basically saying create a list of all of the objects that we have, and then we're going to use that to remove them all. All right, so that gives you an idea of what's in your workspace and you know, ways of creating objects and removing them as you need to. There's, I'm not going to go through it now, but you can also do garbage collection to remove things to actually free up memory if, if need be. Um, Often you will, uh, some people anyways, I, you'll, uh, we'll talk about this later, I don't, don't tend to uh, work this way, but a lot of people like to uh, stop their, their analysis partway, save what they have, and maybe start it the next day. And so one thing that they, uh, people would often like to do with this is to essentially save their, their progress where they're at. And one way of doing this is saving your workspace. So if we've created a whole bunch of objects, or x, y, z, whatever, um, in particular when we've created very complicated output, that may have taken a long time, one thing that you can do is save the workspace. And we've actually seen this before when we've asked to do the quick command. Um, it says save workspace image, for for example. And if you press yes, it'll save a .r, uh, I think it's .r data um, uh, file that if you load r in that same directory, it will use that and, and will sort of load everything up. I'm just going to cancel that. You can also use the save.image function and give it a particular file name and that'll save it in your current working directory uh, and and then if you want to load it again you not surprisingly just go to load apologize for the noise in the background um, and so you can use that however as I said I tend not to do this in my own work and we will generally not work this way but if this is helpful for you and in particular if you're creating very large uh, and complex analyses and you don't want to uh, just output them as regular text files um, you can use this. The other thing that, of course, it's very important to know how to do in R, which may seem uh, a little bit of a, a side trip here, uh, is how do we use the help functions? R actually has pretty useful help functions, in particular once you get over to the basics of, of programming in R, there's lots of useful examples that will just remind you how to do things. So, for instance, if we want to know about the linear model function, which is LM, we could just simply go question mark LM, and you, depending on your um, version of R, it may come up as a HTML help this way, or it may come up essentially as a man page uh, if you've got Unix, uh, set up in a Unix-like way. And in addition to giving you the usage, so here it tells you how to use the formula, which right now won't look uh, at all useful to you, at all helpful to you, um, but it will in the coming weeks and months. It also tells you the arguments that can go into your input, basically into the function call formula of the model, the data, and a number of other things, provides the details of the way the model works, and then output values that you might get from here, which gives you some, some things. And also tells you, usually the first thing it tells you, LM returns an object of class LM. Uh, what this means is that when you call LM, it creates a linear model, and it stores it as an object of class linear model, which may have many uh, useful things, and we will use those, in fact, a great deal in this class. Um, there's also usually at the bottom, uh, other functions you might be interested in, and, and often a few uh, helpful examples that will probably initially seem cryptic until you get a little bit used to using R. 
Sometimes just calling using question marks for something doesn't work. So for instance, if you just go question mark, say, equals, it'll probably give you an error because it doesn't really know quite what you're looking for. In such cases, you can just put things into uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, you can use question mark and put the, uh, in this case, the assignment operator into quotes. And if we do this, then we'll get a assignment operators and we'll see ways of doing it and, and information about that. That's simple enough. Um, we can use this for many different operators, for instance. You can also do something like use the help.search, and this brings up all references to the LM function, and then you, as you, if you do that, you'll see that you can uh, look at specific ones that you might want to. It'll bring up a little window. It usually takes just a few moments to look at, probably in this case because LM has a lot, and you can sort of scroll through and see if you can find what you're looking for. This is generally useful when you can't remember what you're looking for and you just remember a bit of it. Uh, it's not a normal way to search for help as we saw before. And then you can even do a search on the on the R website uh, directly from R as well. Um, in GUIs like this current one, there's actually a help function. You can call R help. And many packages actually uh, in R, so packages are sort of the collection of, of all of the files that you that uh, are put together for sort of helpful functions and what, what have you, and we'll be using a number of these. Many of them happen to have um, many examples and things like that uh, of what to do, course notes in fact, often papers associated with it, many useful sorts of things and that can be very helpful. Okay, and we'll in class ask you to use the help functions to find a variety of things.